Hi everyone, Phil from Wargamer Online here, and today I'm going to be looking at Vallejo's acrylic metal colour airbrush colours. I just want to say Vallejo were absolutely amazing in providing us the range of airbrush paints to review. Amongst those was uh, eight of these metal colours which really sparked my interest, so that's the first to review. Before we get into looking at the paints, I just wanted to start by looking at a couple of items from the uh, online manual. Um, first and foremost, um, it's saying that the metal colours can be applied directly on models without the need or use of a primer. Although in the case of fuselages and components for airplane models, it's recommended you apply a glossy coat. So that's really interesting. I have to say, when I did the test, I still used a primer. I, I didn't feel comfortable uh, just applying with primer, and I'm yet to test that. The next is that the range consists of a total of 19 references, all in 32ml bottles. Um, I received uh, 10 in total, one of them being the gloss varnish, so there's 9 of the colours I'm reviewing today. But this really is an extensive range and very interesting in terms of how it's been provided straight for application into the airbrush. Okay, so let's get into this. First I'm looking at the aluminium. I mean, these things are great, they come in a huge bottle, 32 mil, good quantity of paint. The consistency is perfect for airbrushing, it's really fluid and the amount of pigment contained in these is incredible. I mean, I'm just wiping up the surface there and you can see how much metallic pigment there is contained in these paints. Here we see an example from Vallejo's own publicity material and as you can see, the effects you can achieve with these paints just look absolutely stunning so I really couldn't wait to get to try these out. The colours I received was Pale Burnt Metal, Dark Aluminium, Dull Aluminium, Gunmetal Grey, Gold, Copper, Jet Exhaust, exhaust manifold and the metal varnish. It's great to see Vallejo provide information on how to get the best out of the colour range. As you can see here they're saying you can use an airbrush down as 0.2 millimeter nozzle without having to dilute and you're recommending the pressure of your compressor to be set at between 10 and 15 pound per square inch. Again I think I find it incredible that you can work at such low pressures on such a fine nozzle with metallics. For me this is an absolute first, it's amazing. Okay, first up is the aluminium. As you can see I've loaded the brush, I've set 10 to 15 pound per square inch. I think I was running about 12 and a half, I wanted to see it right down the middle. And I've prepped a bunch of plastic spoons here. They've got basic Citadel black primer on. And as you can see I'm laying the coat down very easy. There's no problem at all with the pigment flowing out of the brush. And it's creating a really smooth finish. Now bear in mind that Vallejo themselves are saying if you want an absolute smooth metallic finish that you should use a glossy undercoat to create a smooth surface but for now I just wanted to see how they'd flow through the brush and I'll be doing further tests on all sorts of different substrates but for now I just wanted to see coverage. So straight away first impressions very happy with it so far. I had a little bit of blowback on the nozzle and as you can see there were some air bubbles inside the cup there. And I think, you know, what I'd probably recommend is I was running on a 0.2 nozzle here, so maybe going up to a larger nozzle would be a good idea, particularly if you're running the lower pressures. Next up is the gold metal colour. Just wanted to show what they're like pre-mixed really, as you can see, they really have settled down. So here I'm using a paint stirrer just to kind of activate the paint fully and I wanted to make sure that all of that pigment was suspended in the medium well. Um, so here I'm using the Badger paint stirrer, there are alternatives available and I've even used a modified coffee stirrer that you can pick up for 99 pence from market stores and those kind of things so just feel free to give it a really good shake or if you can just get yourself one of those paint stirrers I think it's a worthwhile investment. Right, on to laying the paint down. Again, you will see no problem with the paint leaving the airbrush here. It's going down in a fine mist and uh, providing great coverage again. I'm surprised to see the gold um, 
Bear in mind I'm a little bit colorblind on the purple blue spectrum, but for me the gold had a little bit of a, a yellowy slash greeny tint to it really. So um, you know, bear that in mind when you're working with this gold. That it's uh, you know it's not a classic bright golden gold, um, but still really useful for I think realistic metallic effect. The one thing I noticed as I was laying these down is I started to get concerned actually I wasn't really given much time for drying so uh, just bear in mind that I think it's probably better layered up in coats as well but I was just trying to see how it would look for now. The next thing I just wanted to show was how easy it was to clean the brush out really. Um, you know just a quick squirt uh, inside the cup there, blasted most of the pigment back out. I always prefer this method in terms of reversing the pigment out of the nozzle and then providing a bit of back pressure there just to clear the nozzle again and then rinse out. But the good news is really for a metallic colour as you can see just a couple of quick rinses and the cup is already clean and you know a couple of back blasts there and the nozzle is really clearing up nicely. So I was pretty happy to be able to work across multiple colours without doing a full deep clean of the brush. This is just water I'm using to rinse out here, there's no cleaning aid. Okay, next up is copper. Um, again, activated the paint really well, shook it up quite a bit, uh, gave it a good stir and started laying it down. No change in pressure here. All of these uh, metallic colours so far have been incredibly consistent in the pigment size. I've had no problems at all. Again, you can see a few air bubbles just inside the, the, the pot there. And, you know, that's a little bit of pressure leaking back, but not too concerned because it's flowing on so well. Let's just have a look at those two side by side. There's the copper and the gold. The gold's really drying by now, but the copper's still a little bit wet. And just to bring in that aluminium, and that's completely dry now, but look at the shine on that aluminium. Next up, exhaust manifold. So this is quite a dirty metallic color. There's a lot of brown amongst the metallic pigment. Again, no trouble spraying it on at all. The main issue was, was just actually seeing how much I'd put down on this. It's such a fine spray. Uh, and again, I think I'm over applying the coats here. If I was actually working on my models, I'd be taking a bit more time between coats uh, and just allowing each individual coat to drive down to give me a good smooth coat. Let's have a look at pale burnt umber now. Again, no problems whatsoever. Really nice clean color. What I'll do at the end of this is just bring all of these up side by side and do a quick comparison. But you can see this is four or five passes maximum and that surface is getting a great coverage. Let's just look at the pale burnt metal alongside the aluminium. You can see it's subtly different. Just slight different tonal change there where it's introduced the burnt effect. Next up is gunmetal grey. I was really intrigued to see this because I want to see how dark it is because I think this will have a great base to any silvers that you're going to work on. What was surprising about this one was how dark it was. It's not far off of the black. You can barely see it going down on the brush. Now to me this is fantastic. This is enabling you to almost work without a pre-shade. Um, you could lay this down as a base coat and then work up some of the lighter metallics on top and still have that metallic look in some of the recesses but without having to use washers to create the shading. Next up I wanted to compare Jet Exhaust, Dark Aluminium and Dull Aluminium. So all of these are going to be off the uh, clean metallic side of it and probably most suitable for Warhammer 40k's dark future. Again, I just wanted to say that every single time I was testing these paints, I was making sure they were thoroughly activated and stirred up. You can see how liquid they are, how fluid they are. So it's very quick before the pigments start to resettle in the paint. So a good stir and a constant shake every time before I added paint to the cup. Additionally, I was only doing small amounts of paint each time. Now that's obviously because I was painting a small area, but I also think that'd be a good idea if you were doing a large paint job because you know, it won't be long before that pigment starts to settle again within that medium. So work with small amounts, shake the bottle, keep topping the brush up. That dull aluminium is just an amazing coat straight away. I was so pleased with that one. It really did sit out uh, for me in terms of amongst the range. As you can see, compared to the aluminium, 
there's not a huge difference between the paints but there's it's a, it's a, a feel to it more than an actual look you can see it's just slightly off the uh, gloss side of it moving on to the dark aluminium again this is giving you such range really it's not going to be any need for mixing or, or uh, you know shading with some of these you're going to be able to apply them onto your models and then do either zenithal highlights or, or picking out highlights as you work through the range to the lighter colors and they're really going to blend well into each other last amongst these three but by no means least is jet exhaust you know, really interesting pigment mix here you've got the metallic of course you've got that burnt metallic feel there's a slight brown tint in there and I think. There's a lot of depth to these colours, so I think they're going to be a really useful range for them. Let's just have a look at how they turn out once they were dry. Aluminium worked perfectly, it's something that actually polished up really well. Next up was the copper, and again, great depth of colour to that copper. The pale burnt metal, subtle difference to the aluminium. And I think really that was the first sign I saw the problem with me putting too thick a coat on. As you saw, there was a little bit of crackling in the surface there. Exhaust manifold, again, great deal of depth, but still maintaining that metallic colour. Gold. I have to say out of the entire range, that was the only one I was not so sure on in terms of the colour. I think it's a realistic looking colour, but I was hoping for something a little bit more yellow. Gunmetal grey, again, perfect for some of those deep metallic colours that you're looking for. And dull aluminium. One of my favourites, I have to say, I think that'll be really useful for the Caradron Overlord. Dark Aluminium, again, great shading area for that dull aluminium and both the normal aluminium. And then finally the Jet Exhaust. So, that's the full range. I was really impressed with how they turned out. Um, I think you can tell from the uh, review so far how I was super impressed with these paints. The level of pigmentation, uh, how quickly and smoothly they went through the paint, the effect you achieved, uh, just fantastic. Like I say, one cautionary note, and you'll see it on the inside of the spoon on that gold uh, color there. Applying it too thick, you do get a little bit of shrinkage on the paint, which can introduce cracks. But um, as you can see, um, I think that was just me, you know, experimenting and wanting to do a deep coat for the review. And really, if I was doing my own models, I'd slow down a bit and not be in such a hurry to lay down that second coat. A little bit of drying time in between. So, final thoughts. Yeah, incredibly impressed with the range. I'm definitely going to be using these as my preferred metallic colour for airbrushing, I have to say. Um, I've been impressed with Forge World. I've been impressed with Minotaur metallic range. But this range that Vallejo have produced is really top notch. It's just incredible. Um, my next Age of Sigmar army is going to be Caradron Overlords. And, and for those of you who are fans of Age of Sigmar, you'll notice they are a predominantly metallic army. So I'm really looking forward to diving into those models using this airbrush range and seeing what I can achieve. Well, that's it. I hope you enjoyed the review and I hope to see you again soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.